with Mr. Hardwater. This video describes a few of the tips that are really important when polishing the glass to remove the hard water stains when you're working on residential or commercial windows um, that may have a coating on them or maybe higher up in uh, the line of sight where the sunshine's coming in. Now it's really important to note that when you're polishing on the glass most of the hard water usually accumulates at the bottom of the glass and therefore when it's in the bottom of the glass it's usually in the shade and the calcium stains are harder which means that you're probably going to use more of an a, abrasive combination of uh, cleaner and pad to remove the hard water when it's on the lower part of the glass however it's unusual for the hard water really to be really high up but it, occasionally uh, sprinklers and you do get sprinklers will hit the glass and you'll get silicon runoff silicate runoff from uh, concrete etc onto the glass so sometimes you do get staining higher up however it's important to note that the polishing process changes um, when you're working lower than when you're working higher so as I mentioned before the stains are usually accumulating uh, much stronger at the bottom of the glass so in those circumstances it's usually uh, okay to polish with a uh, steel wool pad it's a super fine 4 aught steel wool pad and uh, the powder. Now this is the most abrasive combination and it really cuts through the hard water stains quickly and efficiently and it's really what you're going to want to use on the bottom parts of the glass um, that are lower to the ground and um, in the shade. Now as you move up to the window and the sun starts to come in you're really going to want to switch to a less abrasive combination and in that case what we recommend is for you to use the liquid glass polish as well as our um, nylon pads. Now this is the least abrasive combination possible and that's really important for when you're working up higher because what we really don't want to do in the polishing process is we don't want to create any damage. Now it's very unpredictable and difficult to tell whether or not a window has a coating or not. And this day and age you're never quite sure where the glass is uh, being made and how it's being made. So it's always best to start with the least abrasive combination um, when you can when you're working on windows that may look like they may be coated. So what I recommend then is to uh, change your polishing technique out when you're working lower to the ground than when you're working up higher. And one of the things I like to do too to protect myself during the polishing process is to educate the customer on the technique itself and to talk to them about um, treated windows and ask them if they have a special type of window. You'll notice that in the higher end homes it's likely that the builder or architect may have chosen some unique specialized glass and because of that it's really uh, helpful if you could ask the customer about the glass. A lot of times they may not know, they may, but they may, they may not know the details, but they may know that it's possibly special. So if that's the case, you can ask them about the glass and if the glass has any um, specifications on how it should be cleaned or maintained. And if it does, then I would take a look at that just to avoid any problems that might occur during the polishing process. Because those pieces of glass oftentimes do have some kind of treatment on the glass and if that's the case these treatments are very reactive um, not only to the polishing process but to also chemicals because uh, the treatments are usually a fine layer of metal oxide material that they uh, apply to the glass and those metals really do uh, respond to chemicals and polishing and with the chemicals they can really etch the glass it'll turn the glass a little bit white um, due to the etching and during the polishing process, because the coating is a little bit softer than the glass, what happens is you can leave really light uh, swirl marks in the glass from the polishing. And those swirl marks really aren't evident at all in the shade. It's only when the sun comes in that you're able to start to see those swirl marks. So to avoid those kind of complications, um, ask a customer what kind of glass it is, if it's in a if it's a high-end home. The other thing you can do too is frequently check your work. So you can not only take a look at the polishing um, process on the glass uh, from the outside, but I like to go on the inside of the glass and take a look at it from the inside out when the sun's on it to make sure that everything's okay. And if that's the case, then you're going to be in good shape. And finally, what I like to do is I like to test the polishing process, whether it's lower to the ground or higher, I like to test that process somewhere in a corner where I can really investigate and see what's going on. 
and it really helps me to determine which is the best approach. Now, generally, for me, I like to start with a liquid glass polish because it's the least abrasive uh, material possible, and I'll probably start with the nylon pad. Now, if this combination is not abrasive enough, what I'll do is I'll stick with the liquid glass polish, and then I'll switch to the uh, the super fine four aught steel wool pads. Now, this is a great combination a lot of times for commercial windows. Um, I've really found this to be effective. Now. If this combination doesn't really work well, then what I'll start to do is I'll switch out the liquid glass polish for the powder and then use the powder with the steel wool pad. Now remember, this is the most aggressive combination, so I'm always hesitant to use this combination uh, when I get up higher on the windows and especially when I'm in the direct sunlight. I really prefer not to use that combination when I'm working there. So that is a, a couple tips on how you can change the process out when working from low to the ground to higher to the ground. And also you can change your process out depending upon the type of window that you might be working on. Now as far as shower door goes, shower doors are usually the easiest thing to work on because it's clear glass. Uh, very, uh, very infrequently there's problems there. So in order to get the job done quicker, I always reach for the powder and the uh, steel wool pads. So I hope that these tips will help you to refine the polishing process and will apply the right combination of products um, to the glass um, as needed. If you have any questions, you're always welcome to send us, some, send us an email, phone call us, or even uh, send some photographs to us if you'd like some, um, a second opinion on what the best combination of uh, polishing might be and what the potential risk might be um, for the customer. And one thing too is that we do offer a glass polishing waiver, which is nice. I use it more as an educational um, component to refresh my memory on how the polishing process works um, and what the potential risks are. And once I understand that, I can communicate that to the customer and um, tell them what this process is all about and so that they can determine whether or not they want to proceed with glass polishing. Because remember, glass polishing is really the last resort when it comes to um, hard water removal. There's a lot of great products on the market that you can apply by hand. Um, however, when those don't work, um, then you can always reach for the polisher. But this is really the last step um, to restoring glass. And so if that's the case, when you're doing the restoration process, you want to make sure that you get it right and um, you think through the process and use the best um, combination of products. Um, that are going to get the job done, realizing and working with your customer that um, restoration is uh, can be difficult, can be challenging, but it can be done. And as long as it's done correctly, you have a good chance of success. And you also have a good chance of bringing the windows back um, to maybe near 90 to 95 percent to where they were originally. Now, a lot of times the glass can't be completely restored because there may be some etching on the glass. And etching can uh, be caused due to uh, calcium that's been sitting on the glass for a long time. Uh, when the calcium has been sitting on the glass for a long piece of time, especially in the sunlight, it has a tendency to dig into the glass, eat its way in a little bit, and it etches into the glass. And that is very difficult to get out. And a lot of times, um, once you start getting at that level of glass, it's really uh, difficult to get it out. A lot of times it's not worth uh, um, trying to remove etching. Um, it's much easier to catch the calcium when it's still just sitting on the surface when we can polish it off. So um, etching can also occur when uh, people have used harsh chemicals on the glass. It's not uncommon for the customers to try um, acids and even oven cleaners on glass and what happens that can etch in that the calcium onto the glass or into the glass and sometimes it leaves faint little droplet rings and it leaves a whiteness to the glass that you that you can't always get out with a polishing technique. Um, so it's very important to distinguish between um, calcium that's sitting on the surface and the etching that's actually into the glass. And so when the glass is etched a lot of that's not going to come out and so that means you're going to be only be able to restore the glass to let's say 90 to 95 percent but it's still going to be a heck of a lot better than um, the way the glass looked before, and you're going to recover its value. Um, so those are some of the tips that uh, you need to know when you're um, addressing shower doors, residential windows like this one, and even commercial windows. 
And so if you have any questions, feel free to contact us, and we're always there to help.